Hello there. In this lesson we're going to look at cubic functions. I'm going to show you an easy way to plot them. First of all, a classic cubic function is of the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Where a, b, c and d we call the coefficients, it's the number before the x term. And the shape of a cubic function is like this, typically, if the number before the x cubed is positive, so in this case a is greater than 0, and it starts off low and finishes high. It could look like this depending on the coefficients a, b, c and d, and this point here which I'm going to label now, um, this one here and here, it's called a point of inflection. Now in contrast, if um, a is less than 0, so that's the number before the x cubed, if that's less than 0 then the function starts high and finishes low. But it could of course look like this as well, where we have a point of inflection. Now the difference I suppose between the top ones and the bottom ones is we have these points called turning points. So here is what we call a turning point. And there's one more point to consider, and that is if, for example, the function cuts through, let's say, the x-axis, well then we have what are called roots. And a function may or may not have real roots. Well, it'll certainly have one real root, because it has to start, it'll have at least one real root, but it might have two or three real roots, depending on the function. So these are these are called roots. Now, um, so this is the shape of a cubic function. It either starts low, finishes high, if the x cubed term is positive, or it starts high and finishes low, if the x cubed term is negative. Okay. Imagine you're asked to plot the function f of x equal to 2x cubed minus x squared minus 13x minus 6 in the domain from minus 2.5 to 3.5. Now, if our domain is like this, we would be expected to sub in values such as minus 2.5, minus 2, minus 1.5. And this would be very awkward to do because we have to cube it and square it and so on. So, I'm going to show you how to use a Casio calculator and a particular function known as the table function. Now, to use the table function, we need to change the mode. Now, the mode is this button here. The standard format is for computations. In other videos, we've looked at using the stat mode. So today, we're going to look at number three, the table mode. So if we se select number three, it brings us up to this function notation. Now, of course, in our function we have a variable, x. So how do we write this variable, x? Well, if you look at the closed bracket here, there's a, a red x above it. So I'll show you how to use that. First of all, f of x is equal to 2 times, and now we have to put in our x. So it's alpha, which allows us to select the red keys. So we hit alpha first. And then this closed bracket will allow us to select x. So we have 2x, and now we just need to cube it. So there's an x cubed button, we can select that. And we have 2x cubed. Now we just do minus for minus. And x again is alpha, and then x. And then this time we x squared. Minus 13 x again, so that's alpha x, and then minus 6. Now once you have your function entered, you then need to put in your domain. So we hit equals, and it allows us to put in the starting value, which I'm going to start at minus 2.5. 0.5, and equals, and I want to go up as high as 3.5, so my end is going to be 
0.5 and equals. Now sometimes you might want to go up in ones, you might just want whole number values to sub in, but I want to go up in uh, intervals of 0 0.5. So I select my step is 0 0.5 and then equals and now you can see I have my x values in this first column, my output values, my f of x in the right hand column and if I scroll down I can see I have all of the inputs from minus 2.5 up to 3.5 and the corresponding outputs. This would take a long time to do by hand and on the calculator not only is it done quickly but you know that it is accurate as well. So even if you did do it by hand you could always check your result by doing it on the calculator. Now I'm going to plot this so I'm going to rewrite those tables out uh, in a list and plot it on a graph. Okay here we have on the left hand column all of the different input values and on the right hand side we have the output values. So these give us our paired coordinates or ordered pairs. So our y-axis we need to go down as far as minus 21 and up as high as 22. So let's construct our y-axis here. Okay, I've plotted my x and y axes. My domain is along the x-axis and when x is minus 2.5, y is minus 11. So that is down here. And when x is minus 2, y is 0. So that makes 2 a root of this function. Sorry, that makes minus 2 a root of this function. When x is minus 1.5, y is 4.5, which is here, and so on. And so I have all of my x and y coordinates plotted, and now I can draw my function with a nice continuous curve. and it keeps going on and on and on and on and on. So it starts low and finishes high, this particular one. We have three roots and they are the x-coordinates where the function crosses the y-axis or in other words where the output is zero. So here's one of the roots. We have another root here and there's another root over here. We have turning points here and we have a point of inflection in here. So I hope you can see that using the table function in the Casio calculator can really cut down on the time and it's a very quick way of finding the roots of a cubic function. Hopefully this video has helped you out with that. That's all for now.